On Tuesday morning, Marquez Brownlee found himself at the center of a story about Apple and other companies using his content and many other YouTubers to train their AI. Now, most of these companies, like Apple, rely on third parties to collect the data that they end up training their AIs on. In this case, they were caught pulling transcript data from over 170,000 YouTube videos. As Marquez says, Apple technically avoids fault here because they're not the ones scraping. And I love his use of the parentheses around the word fault here because I don't know. Apple uses a third party to collect this data because it doesn't want to know where that data comes from because they kind of already know where the data comes from. They don't know the specifics, sure, but come on. You and I know that there is widespread data scraping. They have to know. This is plausible deniability. It's also good to point out that the scraping of transcripts from YouTube doesn't just happen. This isn't a bot that scrapes websites and just happens to hoover up something it shouldn't have. Transcripts are a specific kind of file, which means you have to build a specific kind of program pointed at YouTube, point out these files and say, go get that. This is no accident. And there's a ton of text on the internet. Some of it is good, some of it is bad. So if you've ever wondered how ChatGPT will often just spit out three paragraphs of text that all basically say the same thing, but each paragraph is worded differently, that's how copywriters have written for years and years to make their pages rank better on Google in their search rankings. You write the same thing over and over each time with different keywords. That's how you write SEO copy. So if your AI has been trained on a lot of that, which after 20 years of keyword stuffing into web pages, most of it has, that it's not surprising that that is what your AI is gonna spit out. But that's not how people talk. That's not how you and I talk. That's not how these companies want their AI to sound either. So you have to feed data into the system that is more natural. You need good data. And that data is way more valuable than say your uncle's landscaping website. So what is valuable? There's books, uh, the New York Times archive, and yes, YouTube transcripts, absolutely, they're conversational. This is the way real people talk, like and subscribe. I want Siri to start saying that. Now YouTube has rules. Well, actually Google has rules. You are not allowed to harvest this information, those transcripts, for the use in your AI, because Google knows how valuable that data is. Good data is the great natural resource of the AI age. Good data is to big tech what oil was to the automobile industry. And this is why you see all of these companies racing to protect their data or get as much data as they can before others go and try to protect their data. And that's why creators, or many of you who are illustrators who watch this channel on the regular, that's why we get upset when we see our data being fought over by companies that really shouldn't have the rights to it to begin with. If Google, Meta, Reddit, or Apple have the rights to protect their data from training, small time creators should too. Access to lawyers should not be the determining factor here. Meta so values the data on their servers for AI training that they literally will not let most of their users opt out using the opt out form that Meta themselves created for that purpose. The data is that valuable. A few weeks ago, I covered the blow up over Adobe's change to their terms of service. On the surface, it looks like just a bunch of people overreacting to some overly complex legal language. And that's even how Adobe treated it. But dig a little deeper and the anger over these terms of service is the flashpoint, not the cause of their customers' frustration. The actual anger comes from generative AI and how it's trained on creatives work without their permission. So when Firefly rolled out last year, Adobe claimed they had the rights to use the images that it was trained on. How did Adobe get those permissions? Well, they changed their terms of service without anybody realizing it. The creators who signed up to sell their work on Adobe stock image services, some of them dating back almost two decades now, had no idea that their work would ever be used that way to train AI. And they've watched a portion of their income or sometimes their entire livelihood dry up over the past year. Many of us rely on Adobe Creative Cloud to create everything that we make. The files stored on Adobe's cloud are made by the best working photographers, illustrators, designers, and videographers in the world. The data is a gold mine to any corporation making generative AI. It is one of the greatest untapped natural resources of the creative world. This is the good stuff. The backlash to those terms of service is really the customer's only way of saying, hell no, you can't train your AI on my personal work. So even though Adobe came back two weeks later with much better terms of service that specifically said, we will not use your work that you make in our programs to train our AI, 
a lot of people still didn't believe them. And that's because people are mad about how Adobe has taken advantage of their customers in the past, and their AI business model is totally incentivized to do it again. I've been a UX designer, not at Adobe, but for other companies. My job was to stand up for what was best for our customers. And that job could be exhausting. Every guy in sales, every VP, every rando who's looking for a promotion within an organization is going to say, why can't we just insert crappy, stupid thing you could do to your customers to make money here? And every time somebody asks it, you have to shoot out an email explaining why that's a bad idea. And then there are meetings where you have to make your case over and over and over again. People burn out fighting that stuff. I was sick of it. I was totally glad to leave that field of work. If this YouTube thing falls apart tomorrow, I will not go back to UX. I don't know what's happening internally at Adobe, but it seems like the kind of fight that probably happens more than you'd think. There are a lot of good people there. I know many of the people there, but there's probably also bean counters there who are asking, why can't we just tap this huge pile of creative work that we're sitting on that are stored on our servers? Use that to train our AI. And the good people who work at Adobe will kick and scream and do everything they can in their power to stop that from happening. That's probably how we got better terms of service. But I worry that they're gonna get tired, that they're gonna burn out. Out. Maybe some of them will quit because at the end of the day, we all know that Adobe can make a lot of money using our work as training data. And if we're being honest, we all know that Firefly kind of sucks compared to what you can make in Midjourney because Midjourney just took whatever they wanted to make their AI. Adobe hasn't yet. And if they can't in the long term, the pressure to tap our data from management and shareholders is going to be immense. So I dabble in some illustration here. This channel, it's catered towards illustrators and artists, and we've been the canary in the coal mine for a lot of the stuff over the last two years. And it has been interesting seeing this spread out to other creators in recent months. Marquez had a follow-up tweet. He said this about his transcripts. I pay a service by the minute for more accurate transcripts for my own videos, which I then upload to YouTube's back end. So companies that scrape transcripts are stealing paid work in more ways than one. Not great. I feel that. I so feel that. And illustrators and creators all over the world, as they read that tweet, were feeling that too. Marquez will never watch this, but a lot of people found Comfort in that tweet? Comfort is so the wrong word. It's very humanizing, authentic, maybe. I've been watching as illustrators have been protesting against these behemoth companies, the largest ever to walk the earth, as those companies are fighting each other over the rights to use the things that we created, our labor. In the case of Marquez, something he paid for so that they can make more money so that they can goose their stock price. And to know that it can affect one of the biggest creators on YouTube, while that's not good, in a weird way, it doesn't feel quite as lonely fighting that fight as it did a few days ago. And every day, more and more people are feeling it. Do you? Tell your story down below in the comments. Can't wait to read it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.